Outnumbered and outgunned in the skies, Ukraine has used surface-to-air missiles to keep Russian aircraft at arm's length. The country's military hopes bringing F-16s to the fight will push them back farther and keep Ukraine's air force flying for the long term. U.S.-made F-16 fighter jets for Ukraine have begun arriving at training centers in the United States, Denmark, and Romania. Kiev's allies hope the modern aircraft can push Russian aircraft farther from the front lines, target radar transmitters more effectively, and hunt down more cruise missiles. Commander-in-Chief of the Ukrainian Armed Forces Valery Zaluznyi said in November that F-16s will be less helpful now than they would have been a year ago because Russia has had time to improve its air defenses. But they will help address a problem that has persisted from the start of the invasion in February 2022. Russia's more modern combat aircraft have been difficult for Ukraine's military to counter with its own aging fighters. Reuters examined technical documents and spoke to eight military experts, including former F-16 trainers and pilots, about the jet's capabilities, limitations, and the impact they could have on the war in Ukraine. With higher-powered radars and more advanced missiles than Ukraine's Air Force, Russian planes have an edge in long-range air combat. Russian aircraft can launch long-range air-to-air missiles and strike targets near the front lines at distances that prevent Ukrainian fighters from engaging them. Ukraine's increasingly capable air defense network, bolstered by Western systems such as Iris-T, NASAMS, and Patriot, has reduced the effectiveness of Russian long-range missile strikes. Adding F-16s to the mix would provide more protection, as the fighters' radar and missiles allow them to hunt enemy targets at greater distances. Early in the war, Ukrainian air defenses shot down many Russian aircraft during intense raids inside Ukraine. After just a few months, the Russian Air Force stopped flying into contested airspace and relied on long-range weapons such as cruise missiles and ballistic missiles for strikes. Ukraine then added layers of additional defenses with Western-supplied systems, including Patriot batteries that proved effective in destroying even air-launched ballistic missiles. It also uses fighter aircraft, mostly MiG-29s, to shoot down cruise missiles and drones. Making airspace too dangerous for the enemy to fly is a key part of modern military operations. Russia launched intensive air attacks during the first weeks of the war but suffered significant losses, leading it to stop risking aircraft on such missions. Extensive air defense and intelligence efforts have denied Russian air superiority for nearly two years, helping reduce the number of successful strikes on Ukrainian cities and territories. Besides potentially limiting the number of airstrikes on frontline Ukrainian troops, F-16s could operate closer to the line of contact and attack Russian air defense systems. Western military officials and experts say adding F-16s to Ukraine's fleet will not abruptly change the course of the war. Training pilots and support crews takes time, surface-to-air missiles remain a major threat, and the jets are not designed for Ukraine's damaged and sometimes makeshift runways. But they are an improvement on the closest equivalent Ukraine has, the Soviet-designed MiG-29, and, in the long run, will help Kiev integrate with Western military allies and break away from reliance on aging hardware built by its enemy. It locks Ukraine onto a technological path that NATO is currently on, what Ukraine has now is a dead end. It's not going anywhere. If you want to have an air force in 10 years, it's going to have to be F-16s or something similar. Said Robert Farley, a professor at the University of Kentucky who specializes in military affairs and air power. The fighters will replace Ukraine's strained and thinning fleet of MiG-29s, Su-24s and Su-25s, jets that came of age in the depths of the Cold War. Ukraine has found novel ways to integrate Western weapons onto those aircraft. F-16s will allow Ukraine's military to squeeze more performance out of such systems, said Bryn Tannehill, a former U.S. Navy pilot who helped train U.S. Air Force F-16 pilots. One example is the AIM-120 Advanced Medium Range Air-to-Air -air Missile, which Ukraine uses in a ground-launched anti-air role now, and which will soon be provided for air-to-air -air use. The Amram C and D models heading to Ukraine can attack targets beyond visual range, but more important, they are fire and forget. If the pilot has to break radar lock with a target, the missile's onboard radar will guide it. Even if there are no dogfights over the front lines, Ukrainian pilots can hunt down cruise missiles more effectively. 
More than 4,600 F-16s have been manufactured and sold to more than two dozen countries in many different configurations. Lockheed Martin declined to comment on the specific capabilities of the aircraft being sent to Ukraine. Since it was introduced in the late 1970s, the F-16 has been upgraded to perform many missions. By the Gulf War in 1990, F-16s were flying regular ground attack missions with missiles, bombs, and anti-radar weapons. Although the MiG-29 can do some rudimentary air-to-ground missions, it's not made for the task, said Peter Layton, a visiting fellow at the Griffith Asia Institute and former Royal Australian Air Force officer. They both started out as a lightweight day fighter, but because Western concepts evolved, the F-16 gradually evolved into a multi-role fighter capable of doing more advanced air defense missions as well as ground attack, Layton said. The F-16 can carry more weapons than the MiG-29, Su-27 and Su-25, and roughly as much as Ukraine's tactical bomber, the Su-24. The versions being sent to Ukraine most likely have an upgraded version of the Inslash APG-66 radar, said Kelly Grieco, a senior fellow at the Stimson Center. It can keep tabs on targets in the air and ground, with an air-to-air -air range past 100 kilometers. Russian aircraft can spot Ukraine's MiG-29s much further away than the Ukrainians can spot Russian aircraft, Grieco said. The more powerful F-16 radars will reduce the radar disadvantage but will not close it, she said. F-16s and Western aircraft in general tend to be more pilot-friendly, with intuitive controls and displays that allow flyers to keep their heads up, Tannehill added, calling MiG-29 and Su-27 cockpits hopelessly out of date. MiG-29s and many Soviet-era fighter designs were meant to operate in poor runway conditions and have shutters that drop down over their air intakes to prevent the engines from sucking in debris when the plane is on the ground. The F-16's underslung intake does not have such protections, and it is not meant to operate in austere conditions, Grieco said. Training enough pilots and support crew to operate the new fleet will take many months. Eight pilots and 65 support personnel are in the first stages of learning how to operate the F-16 in Denmark. Others are in Arizona and southeastern Romanian town of Fetesti. Although the exact number of aircraft has not been disclosed, it is expected to be in the dozens, experts said. For inexperienced pilots, the first step is familiarization with the new aircraft on the ground and in a classroom. Those elements, plus simulator time, will last about three weeks, said Layton, who transitioned from P-3B maritime patrol aircraft to F-111 bombers during his career. The next step is to ease into flying over the next month. After basic daytime flying has met instructors' expectations, students would move into nighttime, bad weather, and instrument flying, which is a lot more technical. Air combat would come next with six to eight weeks of instruction. Air to ground training would last another two months, he said. After basic instruction, US and NATO pilots spend months learning how to carry out more specialized missions. Spare parts, manuals, and supplies for the F-16s should be plentiful, and the jet is still in production. Only about 1,600 MiG-29s were ever produced, and the aircraft are on their way out even in Russia, according to a Royal United Service Institute report in 2020. Well-trained maintenance crews are crucial, as keeping F-16s in the fight will require regular work, perhaps more than usual if they are operating in difficult conditions. As per the reports, Ukraine expects to receive its first F-16 fighter jets in the coming June-July period. With Russian forces slowly advancing in the eastern Donbass region and mounting a fresh assault in the northeast near the city of Kharkiv, Ukrainian officials see the addition of the F-16 as a vital upgrade for its air force. Russia has warned against delivering F-16s to Ukraine, with its ambassador to Denmark saying that doing so would be an escalation of the conflict.